Hello everyone, FunshineX here. Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Beyond Mods A to Z, where we're going to cover every single mod in the Feed the Beast uh, Beyond pack so that you are an expert. Uh, next up in this episode, we're going to actually cover four very small mods uh, that start with A. They're going to be AE2 Stuff by Bidu, Akashic Tomb by Vazki, Apple Skin by Squeak502, and Aquaculture by Shadow Claimer. That does mean we're going to skip Agricraft, and the reason I'm going to do that is because there are a lot of bugs in this version that have not been fixed yet. It's entirely possible that in the near future they will fix them, but for right now a lot of the things are not working, so I'm not sure how much Agricraft you're going to be able to use at this point. Uh, also, Applied Energistics 2 really hasn't changed in a, lo a lot in a long time, and there are tons of tutorials out there on AE2, so I'm going to skip over that one as well. So that means the next time, next episode, we should be focusing on architecture craft and move on from there. So let's get into these. The first one is AE2 Stuff. This adds about four blocks and a few items. Uh, and basically there to, to bring some of the AE1 items that are missing, maybe, <laughs> um, in a couple cases. And also make things a little bit easier for piping and automation. So the first block that they have in AE2 is the old pattern encoder. It's very, you know, it's just what was in AE1. Um, in AE2, it's been replaced with a panel. Um, and the, one of the biggest drawbacks with the AE2 panel, uh, let's go ahead and get one, just a uh, um, uh, pattern, is, throw it right over here. When you do go to make a pattern, and let's say I want to make a pattern for a pattern, I, I can't shift click this into there. Oops, I keep this item does not go in that pattern terminal. Well, that's all solved by this one little block from A2. Basically, the author thought that this was a good feature and had decided to add his own block. So if I want to create a pattern for a pattern, shift click, there it is. Now I can take that out and I now have a pattern. Pretty cool. It has to be connected to the network. You can see under there, I do have it connected to a network and it continuously draws one AE a tick. Um, one AE unit, whatever it takes. So you don't want to leave this thing on, I guess, all the time. Get your patterns and disconnect it or something. I don't know. Um, but that's what that block does. Its main purpose is just to uh, allow you to shift-click NEI or JEI into the pattern. Uh, pretty cool. Okay, let's undo that. Now let's move on to the next one. This is the Crystal, crystal Ghost Chamber. Now you're like, AE2 already has one of those. Well, this one is kind of like a better version. I didn't really show you the recipe of this one. Um, I don't think it's any more difficult. No, it's all pretty much the same, so it's really easy to make that one. Uh, the crystal growth chamber, on the other hand, you need six growth accelerators, a uh, hopper, chest, and a, a glass um, cable. This is basically to automate crystals. One of the worst things about A2, well, not one of the worst things, but one of the most difficult things is waiting for those stupid seeds to mature. Well, wait no more. Let's go ahead and grab all three types of seeds. We've got the uh, the flux seeds, the certus quartz seeds, and the nether quartz seeds, and we can just go ahead and put those in there. And unlike, well, oops, I was gonna do one at a time. <laughs> unlike when you normally have to throw it in water and give it power and turn it on and off and everything, this block will only drop power when there's actually seeds in there that need to be grown, and it will just allow you to grow them while they're sitting in here, relatively fast as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. And the other nice thing about it is it accepts acceleration cards. So those are now almost done. Amount of time that we put in there. Let's wait for them to finish. There we go. We have the pure quartz. You can pump things in, pump things out. Really easy to get your pure stuff. Um, once you pick it up out of there, you can't put it back in though. So that's, yeah. Can't use this as really a storage. All right, so that's there. So let's put our three acceleration cards in there. And now let's throw these guys in there. And you can just see, look how fast they grow. Now this is consuming a lot of power to do it, but it's really nice. You don't have to throw these in water and, and sit and come back a day later hoping they've grown and all that kind of stuff. So that is your crystal growth chamber. The next one is the advanced inscriber. Now if we look at the recipe of this, it takes a normal inscriber and adds a few processors, irons, and hoppers. This is meant to more help you automate the inscriber process with pipes. Now normally you have to pipe the item in the top slot, and let's look at a normal inscriber. The top slot has to be piped in through the top, the middle slot through the side, and the bottom slot through the bottom, and pull out through the side. Don't have to worry about with the advanced subscriber. It allows you to pull things in and out. You can see that normally things are locked, which means you, um, whatever you put here will be locked and nothing else can be inserted. And that's nice for, you know, 
certain patterns if you want the uh, the redstone. Well, I've had her here. The redstone, the uh, advanced circuit, a printed logic circuit, and silicon. You might not want this to ever leave, right? So you can uh, unlock it. Put, oh, maybe that goes in the bottom. There we go. <laughs> so you lock it, and then um, even after this is done finishing, it would leave one there so that you it, nothing else would go in there. I don't know. There's there's some ways. Just it's just basically to help you pipe things in and out to make this process a lot easier. The other cool thing is normally you can only put one of these and one of these in a slot. They don't stack. And also, the output does not stack in here. Let's just take like half of these. And so it's kind of when you want to make a bulk. I mean, look at this. One item in each slot. How can I? I want to come on. <laughs> and I can only do one in the output slot. So this advanced subscriber gives you the ability to stack output and stack input and pipe things in and out any size you want. So that's a really cool block. Next one is the wireless connector. Now this allows you to connect a network wirelessly to another network. So you need to build two of these blocks for it to work. Uh, and if we look at that, the recipe, it's a wireless receiver, processors, pure fluix, iron, so pretty easy to make. Um, and you need two of them. You also need to make this tool, which is a network tool, processor, and wireless receiver. And you might, well, yeah, let's, let's just make one of these. So we've got this guy. We're gonna put this down in the world and then we're gonna right click on it. And this is bound to blah, blah, blah coordinates. Then we come over anywhere else in the world. I, I don't know the limit. There's nothing in the wiki that says the limit on this. Come over to another wireless block and right click on it. And now it'll connect. Now these two networks are connected as if there were cable in between them. So if you'll see over here, this is actually getting power even though I have no power connected to it at all. And it's got dirt. 128 dirt in there, which I can see from this panel over here, even though there's no pi uh, cable involved. So this is pretty cool. It allows you, maybe you can have a, you know, instead of running pipes between a bunch of different rooms in a factory, you could just connect them wirelessly. Now there's no mention of max distance that you can connect across, and if there's any energy loss or, um, you know, packet transfer, maybe like increased time to pull things out or that kind of thing, there's no mention in the wiki of it, so we'll just have to trial and error or, or do some experimentation to find out if there are limits, but pretty cool little block there. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this guy. You know, this process is pretty slow. Normally you can take three acceleration upgrades in here. This guy can take five. Look at this thing. Boom, 29, 30, 31. That is awesome how fast that can craft. As long as you got enough power, <laughs> you can make processors really, really quick now. And that is it for A2, guys. Just four blocks and a few items. There is this little debug item. Um, it shows you kind of like where everything is in case you can't see through your walls. Um, you can, uh, I think it's shift, um, shift mouse wheel. And that'll show different P2P links, um, channels and nodes, channels only, nodes only, everything. So yeah, that's a pretty cool little tool. This would probably show a lot more if I actually had an advanced AE network with different channels, but you can see that there's one channel being used here, one channel being used here, and one across the network. Um, that is really nice when you've got like, you know, those huge cables, dense cables that are holding all those channels. You need to find out where they're being used. This tool is pretty cool. It's showing you that and visualizing in the world, where are your channels being used? Cool. All right. So that's there. Let's move on to the next one, which is the Akashic Tomb. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the stuff out of my inventory. And you can see the Akashic Tomb, all it is, all the mod is, is one book. And it just opens and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's it. Other than it gives you a reference there, you can see anything I mouse over, it tells me what it is, kind of like a little NEI type thing, if you don't, if you're not using, a, not NEI, Wayla, if you're not using Wayla, then this kind of gives you that um, effect by mouse over, over things, but also if you um, take any modded book, or any vanilla Minecraft book, and I've just grabbed a ton that, that came out, okay, thought I crashed for a sec, a ton of that are included in Beyond, just random books here, I can uh, craft this, let me get out of creative, in a crafting window with any book and it will actually store that book inside the Akashic tomb. So you can see it pretty much works with any book type object. Um, you can hear, can you craft multiple at a time? No, just one at a time. So as you get a book, 
Oh, journal is not a book. Okay, go away. Uh, that is not a book. Go away. You can see most things work, though. Definitely this stuff from Tinker's Construct. I always throw these books in the trash because, and then craft them again later when I need them. Um, but look at that. All that inventory is now in this one little thing. Now, where did they go? How do we access them? Well, if we right-click in the world, you can see it's going to show you all the books that are stored there. And a lot of the other mods that do similar things just kind of give you a representation of this. This actually is going to turn this item into whatever you click on. So when I click on cooking for blockheads, I'm actually going to get the cooking for blockheads book. So when I right click, it's going to do exactly the same thing as if I clicked on it with clicking for blockheads. It, does, it knows no difference. So I can craft all the things, I can see all the items and recipes. Now if I want to get it back, all I have to do is punch the sky, and now I've got the Akashic Tomb back, right click, I can change, now I'm in the actually additions module, punch the sky, we can change to the Tomb of Alaka History, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a really cool space saver block book. <laughs> that can take, a, you know, normally you have a huge library of books. Now you can put them all in one place. Awesome. That's all it is to Tomb of Akashic, uh, or Akashic Tomb. I love that. Okay. The next thing. This is a really tiny little UI mod. That's all it is. But it's called uh, Apple Skin. And with modded Minecraft, you ha usually have a lot of mods that add food. And it's hard to keep track how many saturation points, how many food points they give you when you eat them. So we just uh, mouse over them and look what it uh, does. You've probably seen this in other mod packs and just not known what it was. But this is Apple Craft or Apple Skin, so it shows four haunches and uh, whatever six and a half uh, saturation. And now you can see with Pam's it works. It works with pretty much any uh, any food item. Tell you how many haunches and saturation it gives. That's all there is to Apple Skin, guys. <laughs> Nothing else. Now, to aquaculture. Aquaculture tries to improve fishing um, by giving you a few new items and also a bunch of different realistic fish. So if you look, here's aquaculture, aquaculture, whatever. And it starts you off with just a basic wooden fishing rod um, that actually is just crafted by taking a normal Minecraft fishing rod and putting it in a window, you get the f wooden fishing rod. Um, let's grab all these items here and head on out to the water and this one is not going to be any different uh, from vanilla as far as like time it works the same way you cast distance time to catch a fish it's going to be the same maybe it takes a while this is why the mod was made because fishing is boring maybe we'll catch a fish <laughs> it's really realistic right you can wait here for hours there we caught something all right, and you can see here we've already noticed our first difference. We got a perch, and it has a weight. Um, the weight determines how many fillets you get when you cut it up. So you can see this little tiny perch was only four pounds. I only got one fillet. Um, but different fish are going to be found in different biomes, um, and you can read the wiki on exactly what. But there's freshwater fish, um, desert fish, tundra fish, saltwater fish, tropical fish. Mushroom Island fish, <laughs> but basically, yeah, it's a ton, a ton of different things. Just to add some variety, you can catch a shark, you can catch a whale, you can catch a squid, you can catch a turtle, frogs, but yeah, and a bunch of different types of fish. That's pretty cool. So just just at that, you've already gained you know some benefit, right? By just by the um, the variety that it adds. But then you've got upgraded fishing lines. So now we can uh, craft an iron fishing rod, stick two iron to string or a golden fishing rod, or a diamond fishing rod. Now look, at the, look at the difference between, you know, we just saw the, the wooden fishing rod. Now look at the iron one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Iron's still pretty slow, but you can see that was a lot faster than gold, or than, uh, than wooden. Gold is even faster, and it should catch one any day. Already we caught a fish, the gold one. Does not have a lot of durability, but wow, you catch them fish. They're fast. Pretty cool. All right, and then lastly, the diamond one is like instant. It's just amazing. Maybe. It was faster than that when I was trying it earlier. Come on. Either way, it's faster than a, a wooden fish. And you can see all these fish we got. We got a perch. Brown trout gave us three fillets. Here's another little, oops, tiny little perch. Bluegill gave us one. 
You can take these fillets, you can use them in Pam's recipes, they, they or dictionary to uh, raw fish. Um, you can also cook them up, uh, where's smelting, and then use them as cooked fish or dictionary, so that's pretty cool. Um, then there's a whole other set of items that you can get from fishing. You can obviously get your wooden boots, you can get your buckets, I don't know, all that kind of stuff that normal fishing gives. Um, but you can get apples out of the water somehow. I don't know where apple waters come from or water apples come from. Um, you can get driftwood, which crafts into planks. You can get a tin can, which you can smelt down for an iron ingot. Uh, you can use get algae and seaweed, both of which are editable and not compatible with apple... Uh, whatever the last mod we talked about. It. Um, apple skin. Not compatible with apple skin for some reason. It doesn't show what they how much feed, but you can eat those, and they're also or dictionary to seaweed and that kind of thing. You can get a message in a bottle that if you click on it, we'll just give you a random stupid little message. The message magically fades from your hand. Um, you can get a box which has items that gave me coal. We've got a lock box which gives a little better item, and we got the final which is the treasure chest which gives you an even better item. Um, pretty cool. And then really rarely you'll get the Neptunium ingot. Um, or a Neptune bount, uh, Bounty. See, that's a really good item. It gave us Neptune legs, and these are actually better, equal or better than diamond. So, yeah, I just, if I fish with a diamond uh, um, fishing rod, I might get one of those diamond Neptune's Bounty, and might have legs in there, and I've just found tons of diamonds, right? So, really cool, really cool set. The, uh, the tools that you can make with the Neptunium ingots are also... Uh, stronger than diamond. Um, they mine faster, hit harder, so pretty cool. All the standard tools you can make. And I think that is it, guys, as far as aquaculture goes. Four little tiny mods all add cool little things to help you uh, improve your gameplay and, and kind of just add some convenience, some variety, and I think all four of them are really cool. Guys, that's the end of this little tiny little tutorial. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. And again, as mentioned, next time we'll cover architecture craft and keep moving from A to Z. And you guys will be experts at Feed the Beast Beyond. Catch you guys later. Bye.